reciprocates with the pure devotees. Uh, it comes in chapter 86 of the 10th canto and it describes how Lord Krishna would come out from Dwarka and he'd go to visit places like Mithila. Mithila is a place where Janak Maharaj his descendants all lived there. And uh, Lord Krishna went to visit there along with so many great sages and brahmanas and people like Dwight Bainavyas and uh, Augustya and Asita and so many others. They all came with Lord Krishna to visit the people in Mithila. Lord Krishna brought them on his chariot. Lord Krishna's chariot could move at the speed of at the speed of light, so very fast. But although it was moving at the speed of light, still people would be able to see him by the cosmos mercy of Lord Krishna. Anyway, Lord Krishna came to Mithila and he met with people like Maharaj Bahulasva. There were two people particularly mentioned who were prominent when Lord Krishna came there. He met with Maharaj Bahulasva and the Brahmana Shrutadev. So it's very interesting how Lord Krishna was invited to both of their homes. Maharaj Bahulasva, of course, lived in the palace, and Shrutadev was a Brahmana, and he was a poverty-stricken Brahmana, but he never worried about it. He, ne he was never anxious for material wealth. He lived a very simple life, and somehow, by the grace of Krishna, Whatever he needed, it was provided for him by the grace of Krishna. And in this way, he, he maintained himself. Maharaj Bahulasva was a king. He lived in a royal palace, but at the same time, he was not full of false ego. He was humble, very... Uh, very much without any kind of pride. He, although he had so much position and wealth and power, he was not attached to it and he was not proud of these things. But rather he lived in a nice manner and he was very much respectful to the devotees and to the brahmanas. So when Lord Krishna came there, Lord Krishna was invited to both their homes, so Lord Krishna expanded himself. So one form went to the home of Bahulasva, and one form went to the home of Maharaj, of Shrutadev. And the sages also expanded themselves. Not only did Lord Krishna expand himself, but all the sages who were with Krishna, they, they
The sages also expanded themselves. And in this way, Lord Krishna was able to give pleasure to both of these very wonderful devotees. So Bahulashva, he received Krishna in great opulence and all the sages, he gave them, he understood they must be tired after a long journey from Dwarka and he gave them all nice seats and then brought them all nice foodstuffs and worshipped them very nicely. At the same time, Lord Krishna went to Shrutadev, Shrutadev being a Brahmana. He, he didn't have any seats to offer them. Rather, he borrowed some grass from the neighbors. He borrowed some straw from the neighbors' houses. And in this way, he provided some seating arrangement for Lord Krishna and all the great sages who would come there. So, Lord Krishna wanted to show the greatness of these devotees. And he showed also how material situation has nothing to do with their devotion. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Samoham sarva bhuteshu name dveshostina priya. Ye bhajanti tu mam bhaktam aite teshu chapyaham. Lord Krishna says, I envy no one, I am equal to all. But whoever renders service to me, he is a friend, he is in me, and I am in him. So Lord Krishna was so happy to be received in both these places, although there was such a contrast between the two conditions, the opulence mm -hmm. of Maharaj Bahulasva and the poverty of Shuddha King Bahulashva provided very nice opulent foodstuffs cooked in ghee. All the finest varieties of different foods were offered. And Shrutadev Prabhu provided some simple foods, whatever was easily available by the gift of nature he could offer to Lord Krishna. So this is how Lord Krishna reciprocates with his devotees. Spiritual teacher, his position is to serve Krishna in whatever condition Lord Krishna provides. We saw Srila Prabhupada, one minute he would be in Hong Kong and he would be living in a penthouse suite in a big hotel and riding in a Rolls Royce, and the next minute he would be in Bhubaneswar, in Orissa, and he would be living in a mud hut and riding on an auto rickshaw. So Srila Prabhupada didn't make any distinction between one place and another. Srila Prabhupada was just as happy to be in Bhubaneswar, taking bath, from the hand pump and taking the mud from the ground and using it as soap. And in this way he was telling the devotees how to live naturally, depending on the gifts of nature. He told the devotees, you don't need to buy soap. This soil here is very good. You simply take this soil and you rub it on your skin. He said it has all the chemicals will be very healthy for your bodies. And Prabhupada was doing this and he was taking bath there every time he was there. He stayed there for several several weeks. He stayed there in Bhubaneswar, living in the mud. Prabhupada didn't mind. He was indifferent to these situations. That is the mood of the your devotees, that they're not attached to material conditions. They don't worry about certain facilities being there or not 
being there. They can live in any condition. The important thing is they want preaching. Just like the devotee was inviting Prabhupada come to Hawaii and said the mangoes are just coming in season. Because the one devotee there knew that Prabhupada liked very much mangoes. But Prabhupada said, no, he said, I'm not going to come to Hawaii now. He said, I'm going to Russia. And he said, preaching Krishna consciousness in the snow of Russia is sweeter than the sweetest mango. So Prabhupada went off to Russia and he was preaching there in Russia. And of course he began the preaching there in Russia. The first devotee came, Prabhupada accepted him as a disciple and, and got him initiated. Later on he even arranged a, a wife for him and in this way he encouraged the devotee to preach Krishna consciousness all over Russia. And that's why we have many centers and devotees there in Russia today. So, devotee of Krishna, it doesn't worry about the material facilities. It's not important. What is important is he, he wants the, the preaching. The preaching has to be there. And that preaching, that is distributing the message of Krishna to everyone. Indeed, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, his words are very famous, how he instructed the Brahmana from Kurmadesh that wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell him about Krishna and in this way become a spiritual teacher and save the land. So, Ramananda Rai, was given that kind of facility by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ramananda Rai considered himself to be unqualified. Ramananda Rai said, I am simply low-born, I'm a sutra, and I'm a, in family life. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, that is not important. What is important is that you know the signs of Krishna. Ipa mipra kipa nasi sudra keni nai e krishna tapa vit se guru hai. It does not matter what position one is in socially or materially, but if one knows the signs of Krishna, then he can deliver the world. He can become a spiritual teacher and he can deliver the world from their ignorance. Right? We're all in ignorance initially. We offer our prayers, Om Ma Jnana Timarandasya, that I was born in the darkest ignorance. But my spiritual master forced open my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. So the, the spiritual master is Guru. Guru means heavy. And Prabhupada said that heavy is not heavy like an elephant. It's not just, you know, heavy, big belly. But guru, heavy means heavy in knowledge. That they have this knowledge, they want to give this knowledge. They want to distribute this knowledge of Krishna to everyone, everywhere. And they're eager to distribute it. So. Krishna consciousness is based on these kind of principles. We like to distribute the message of Krishna everywhere. And there are always people waiting and looking to receive Krishna consciousness. So I had the good fortune to join the Krishna consciousness movement in London. And uh, it was in the UK where His Holiness Bhakti Prachandranandana Swami Maharaj first met Krishna consciousness. He was studying in the UK 
and it happened that he met Supak Swami. Supak was a brahmachari at the time. Supak Swami was from, he's from Bengal, from Calcutta actually. Most of the Bengali devotees are from Bangladesh today, but Supak Swami, he was from Calcutta. Supak Swami was born in a wealthy aristocratic family. And as a young man, he had been interested in going to temples and meeting sadhus. So his parents sent him to the UK to get education. They thought, we'll send him away from India so that he doesn't become a sadhu. So he went to the UK and there he met the Krishna Consciousness Movement and very quickly he became a devotee. Very, he was very enthusiastic to join Krishna Consciousness and take up Krishna Consciousness. I remember when I joined, he was there, he was the only Indian. I was thinking, wow, even an Indian has joined this. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, he was there. Later on, however, that was in London, later on, there was one couple, English couple, they decided to open a center in Birmingham, and Subhag Swami, he thought it would be good for him to also go there to Birmingham, and he could help them preach in Birmingham, because there's quite a large Indian community there in Birmingham, so he thought it would be good if he's there, he can help them. So Subhag moved up to Birmingham, and he was there in Birmingham, and it was in Birmingham he met with Bhakti Prajendranandana, who the personality who went on to become Bhakti Prajendranandana Swami Maharaj. So Subhak Swami made a very deep impression on Bhakti Prajendranandana Maharaj. They were both from aristocratic, wealthy families. Bhakti Prachandranandana Swami Maharaj. Sometimes he would take me to meet some of his relatives. They were all wealthy people, some were doctors, some were lawyers, different people, all big professional people. So he was from that kind of family. He himself, of course, was completely detached from all of that. He had no interest in money or in women. He was very detached from the material world. So he joined in Birmingham there, and he was initiated there in Birmingham. Oh, well, actually not in Birmingham. They came to London. Prabhupada gave the initiation in London. Prabhupada never went to Birmingham. The Birmingham Center didn't last very long. After some time it closed and Subhak Swami and Bhakti Prachandranandana, they both moved back to London. And Bhakti Prachandranandana, as a brahmachari, he was very active in Sankirtan. He loved to go out on Sankirtan and distribute Prabhupada's books. He was always out there on the road, traveling in different places in the UK and distributing books. He was very successful at it. He liked to go out there and meet people and give some book to them and get some donation from them and engage them in Krishna consciousness. So that was my early memories of Bhakti Prajendranandana Maharaj. At that time, he was a young man and he hadn't put on much weight at that time. He was not very, you know, like later on as he got older, he put on some weight, but as a young man, he was not so like that because he was always active. He liked to go out on Harinam preach and distribute books and he traveled extensively all over the country for several years. So at some point 
he'd gone to India and visited Vrindavan and Mayapur and then he heard how there was some preaching starting in Malaysia and he thought it would be good he could also help being a Malaysian he thought let me also go there and contribute and help so he came over to Malaysia and he got involved in the preaching here <laughs> and he did a lot of preaching he traveled made life members enrolled people in life membership got them out to give donations and of course all the money went to the temples he didn't keep any money for himself he was a very selfless person he didn't have anything of his own everything belonged to the temple and Krishna so in this mood he traveled and preached Krishna consciousness so he was awarded sannyas first of all he was given the sannyas initially the first it was through Ansadutta Maharaj had given him sannyas initially however there was some uh, problem with that initiation because Ansadutta Maharaj at that time had some difficulties, he had some personal problems. So later on then he took reinitiation from His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj. Of course, Bhakti Prachandananda Maharaj is a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, first and second initiation. The sannyas initiation was given initially by Hasadura, later on it was given by Jaipataka Maharaj because they thought Hansadura's initiation wasn't quite proper. Anyway, certainly whether initi initiation or not, Maharaj was always very renounced. He had that mood of detachment from the material world. And he was very happy to be in Krishna consciousness and to travel and preach. And he would go he made a point to go to India and to go to the Holy Dham and he would take part in the Parikramas. Even though he'd put on weight, still he would go to Parikrama and he would take part and he would walk. He would walk. He wouldn't take rickshaws. He would walk around every day, walking in the Parikrama. He liked to do these things. He liked to practice austerity because he knew austerity is the well of the renounced order of life. If you don't have any austerity, you're not really renounced. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga Shikshata Eka Purusha Purana Shri Krishna Chaitanya Sharera Dari Kripambudir Yastva Maham Prabhadye Srila uh, Sagabhama Bhattacharya glorifies Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in this way. That Mahaprabhu is an ocean of mercy and he has come to teach us about Vairagya, detachment and Vidya transcendental knowledge along with bhakti yoga devotional service so bhakti prachendra nandana maharaj was a follower of srila prabhupada who was a follower of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu and the mood was the same vairagya vidya nija bhakti yoga devotional service is based on these things detachment from the material world along with the cultivation of transcendental knowledge his holiness like very much to hear about krishna from the devotees he enjoyed hearing srila prabhupada's books he liked to sit and read the books of Srila Prabhupada. 
something which we all need to be doing regularly. We need to regularly hear and chant the glories of Lord Krishna. It's very important for us. We have to develop the taste. People say, oh, I feel tired when I open the book. Whenever I open the book, then I go to sleep. You have, that means we have no taste. We've developed no taste for hearing about Krishna. What to do about it? You have to stand up. You have to open the window. You have to stand up and chant the holy name and you have to read loudly. But we have to practice, we have to cultivate this taste. We have taste for many other things. We have no problem with prasadam, we have a good taste for prasadam. We have a good taste for, Bo for Bollywood movies or Tamil movies. But we have no taste to hear Krishna Kata. We have no taste to chant the holy name. We're very unfortunate souls. But we can become fortunate if we desire. The problem is we don't have a strong desire. Our desire is not very strong. We just simply want to loiter here in this material world. And we're simply thinking, Oh, I'm comfortable, everything's okay, everything's all right, everything's going on by the grace of Krishna. And we don't think, we don't realize how temporary this world is and how we have to make arrangements to get out from this world. And one day, sooner or later, this whole material world is all going to fall apart. And Srila Prabhupada often told us, don't think this is going to last. All of these big buildings, condominiums, highways and fast motor cars, they don't last very long. They build big buildings. How long will your apartment last? Maybe 20 years. After 20 years, then it's finished. It's old. Your motor car, motor car, 10 years old. In Singapore, if your car is 10 years old, you have to trade it in and get a new one. You cannot keep a car after 10 years in Singapore. And so all these, what do they do? Of course, they sell them to Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> Malaysia gets the old Singapore cars, you know. But how long did they last in Malaysia? Oh, another 10 years, maybe, yeah? But, and, but they're not eternal, that's the point. We have to understand how this world is temporary. And we have to understand this is not our real home. We have to make arrangements to get out from this place. So, this is why the Vedic system, the Vedic culture is there, that as we go on in life, we have to gradually become detached from these things. There is after Grihastha life, then Vanaprastha, and in even sannyas, go on and come, take up perfection of renunciation, to dedicate everything in the service of Lord Krishna. So Bhakti Prachandananda Maharaj is a very nice example for us, how he dedicated his life fully for the service of Krishna. And by the arrangement of Krishna, he could give up his body, in Malaysia, and we are very fortunate that the, his remains have been brought here to this wonderful temple here in Siprangjaya, and we can observe this festival today in his honor. And we should pray that we can remember his nice example, and we should hope that we can also be an example, just as he was an example. So we're very thankful for him. He maintained his life throughout his life. He maintained his vows to Srila Prabhupada. He never went away from ISKCON. He never went outside the association of the devotees and the association of the ISKCON center. So we're very thankful for, to him and we're praying to him that Please be merciful on us also, 
that we can follow your nice example. Srila Bhakti Prachandanandana Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Lord Premanand Hare Krishna First of all, uh, we have to thank His Holiness Bhakti Nashima Maharaj wonderful speech and also it bring us some good memories for this association with the Bhakti Vijayana Maharaj. So now, uh, thank you so much Maharaj for gracing uh, this Tripawa uh, of Guru uh, Maharaj. And next, we would like to call upon senior devotees to come and give some homage to Bhakti Vijayana Maharaj. First, we would like to invite Dwarakadish Prabhu to come forward and uh, say a few words. Thank you.